What is up, down, and sideways, all you beautiful individuals of this beautiful planet? Welcome to another Epi of League Unlocked. My name is Eric Han Solo on the Epi today as we go back and relive a little bit of Swish stage action, handing out some all pro honors, and I know. It's even a little trickier to do than the previous iterations of the World's Group Stage because some teams didn't even play six games. You're talking about four games for squads like Gen G immediately popping through. So it's it's hardly even enough of a sample size to fully grade some of these uh, guys. And, you know, some guys on Gen G and even JDG didn't really need to have any pop-off performances, which is why... We don't have Gen G or JDG members on this list. Imagine, I'm not saying that these five guys are better players than anyone on JDG or Gen G, but we're just looking specifically at the microcosm that was the Swiss stage, and these were the best performing guys in our humble opinion. And we start in the top lane, where if you look purely at numbers, damage percentage type stuff, maybe Ben wouldn't be at the tippity top of your list, but if you watched him in games, and if you watched him specifically any time he was piloting the Jacks, you know that this dude is an absolute menace, was single-handedly responsible for some of these sizable gold leads uh, against both T1 and G2 getting solo kills on both BB and Zeus in kind of a revenge matchup in that second game against T1. But Jax needs to be permabanned against this dude. Problem is we've seen him pop off on Renekton, which is a pick that is maybe the most underwhelming top lane pick that we've seen throughout the entirety of the World Championship. So even if you're banning out Jax, obviously this guy has multiple other staple champion picks that he can take a game over on. But Jax is at the very forefront of that list, and he continues to be one of, if not the main focal point for this BLG squad, who I know got off to a little bit of a slow start at this World Championship. Also have a tough quarterfinal draw, but the potential for this team you know, to be top two, like we saw out of MSI, is very much still there. And a lot of that stems from the incredible levels that we've seen out of Bin. Uh, it has been more gigabin than not so far for BLG at this World Championship. When you move to that jungle spot, listen, there's a lot of world-class junglers at this event. You're talking guys like Kanavi, Peanut, Tarzan, who have all been outstanding, but... Have they been outstanding to these levels so far at Worlds? Not necessarily, and maybe this, I know this is going to be the hottest, most contested one that we have on this list, but if you look at the best back-to-back -back games, the best series that any jungler had in the Swiss stage, where would you probably be saying? You'd be saying contracts against G2, NRG contracts, I know. An LCS member on this list, absolute blasphemy, but... The Vi and J4 performance that he had against J G2 against Yike, who's a guy who we were talking about competing against the very best internationally. My boy Contracts absolutely gapped him. Even in the other wins that NRG have had, he looked great. He has this entire event. He has kept the level of play that he had through that miracle run in the LCS playoffs for NRG. So absolutely, he deserves the respect and acknowledgement for having incredible play even guys like canyon on d plus are saying you know what i was surprised by this uh contracts guy at nrg he's played super well and yes my boy canyon respect yes he absolutely has there's other guys obviously you can highlight on this nrg squad that have been absolutely uh lethal and surprising overperforming maybe what people were expecting palafox is a guy you can talk about but there's some other mid laners that you couldn't quite hop him over I, the star jugglers, I mean, Tarzan's been good on LNG, but he hasn't been a, an absolute world beater. He's been, you know, kind of par for the course for him, which, by the way, par for the course for Tarzan is uh, one of the best jugglers on the entire planet. But Contracts, because he's played at such a high level and probably even higher than people were expecting and was such a driving force, such a big gap in that jungle matchup against G2 specifically, which of course was the series that even qualified for NRG to get to quarterfinals. So absolutely put some respect on our boy Juan and what he did so far in this Swiss stage. Just talked about how great Palafox was. The problem is Tarzan's partner in crime, Mr. Scout, 
Uh, well, he hasn't lost a beat from being MVP of the LPL. And this guy, you know, as much as we want to praise contracts and I'm defending him putting him on this list, Scout was doing it against guys on JDG. Scout was doing it against guys on KT Rolster. The level of competition has been much higher out of him. And LNG has already proven that they are legitimate threats to JDG time and time again. Three straight series, even though they've lost all three of them. And proven that they are legitimate threats to win the entire thing at the World Championship. Not just a semifinal run, not just a finals run. It's the reason T1 versus LNG is the most stacked quarterfinal matchup we've had in years both of these squads are it feels like bare minimum a top four squad so it's a bit tragic that one of them are gonna have to exit in the round of eight but scout has lived up to being you know top three top four player at this event so far on multiple different picks you know the azir is always i mean the start to his worlds was like he was like 18 and one or something on a couple of azir games we've seen him get five man nico alties we know whenever he's picking a silas he can take over a game which he did against jdg so multiple picks across the board meta or not he continues to be playing at an mvp level in an absolutely maybe the most stacked position at this event he continues to be highlighted and be a standout performer so scout one of the best signings lng has ever had uh, and he has been delivering across the board for this squad then we go bot laners and uh we got we got a duo we got a pair in the bot lane because i think as a whole you think back a few months to T1 losing back-to-back -back series to DRX. And this isn't the world champion DRX. This is the peak underwhelming bottom feeder DRX and T1 not playing at all at a high level. But it was Gumayushi who was trying to keep the boat afloat without Faker. And he did just that. And now that Faker's back and the boys are firing at all cylinders, Guma looks damn good. We're talking maybe approaching the best he's ever looked on t1 and what's been so great about him at this worlds is it hasn't been zaya and kaisa that my guys popping off on we've seen some great ash performances the jinx comes in the santa tk with him and curia in the bot lane some of these slightly off pick uh off meta picks that we've seen out of him are where he's been thriving and shining obviously taking a little page uh, from his buddy kiria in the bot lane but guma has been unbelievably reliable positioning absolutely pixel perfect on point in a lot of these team fights and the biggest thing to highlight out of him and kiria is the laning phase they have been annihilating i mean elk and on we're getting smashed obviously cloud nine and team liquid we don't need to talk about what was happening in those 2v2s but the bot lane as a whole for t1 has been the standout part for both of them owner has also been very good and was the other guy maybe you could put over contracts but it felt a little egregious to put three members of t1 on this list especially because as great as guma has been and well deserving of the shout out kiria is the absolute no-brainer to slot in at support so far on the swiss stage and when you combine the level he's been at with gumayushi oh my god this t1 bot lane legit looks like they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with genji pays and delight ruler and missing on jdg Gala and Hong over on LNG. They look ready to compete with the very best. Kyria is really turning into that best player in the world type form. How many times have we watched this barred flash cube that he's doing? The Tom Kench. That's a pick we've talked about uh, for over a year now. That this guy makes that champion look completely different. And now, finally, we're seeing some changes. In the support picks, we're seeing some stuff that he can actually be highlighted on. It's not sitting back on Enchanters. It's not just playing, you know, Rakan over and over and over and over again. Seeing some champion diversity in the bot lane and in that support role, especially. We know that that's when this guy thrives. But T1 as a whole, but specifically the bot lane of Kyria and Gumiyushi are playing the best that they have all year long. Peaking at the absolute perfect time. Cannot wait to see Guma versus Gala in an old RNG T1 MSI rematch. And then, of course, Kyria going up against them as well. 
the most interesting picks have come out of T1 in the bot lane, and there's no reason to think that that is going to change when they match up against LNG. Lots of standout performers uh, from the Swiss stage. Maybe we'll do a Swiss stage whoopsie or the Dade Award moment because, you know, anyone receiving that award is not making it in to top eight but uh, we will be back for a full quarterfinal preview mark will be around to do that but that is it today for league unlock my name is eric thank you all you beautiful people for watching as always and we will catch you on that flippity flip